Hello, I'm Anthony. Welcome back to the Essential Guide to Audio Processing in Cubase 12. We're having a look at the pool at the moment. This is part two of our examination of the pool. If you want to download this project and follow along with this stuff uh, side by side, check out the Patreon and YouTube channel member links below where you can get a copy of this project and the audio files. First thing I want to show you today is a little quirk about the way uh, Cubase works under the hood. If we have a look in the audio folder, you can see the three files that currently comprise this project. Uh, I'm just going to move that out of the way for a moment and I'm going to select the guitar chords track. So I've literally single clicked it. You can see that the track has record armed because that's the default behavior I currently have set up in Cubase. And if I drag Explorer back, a new file has appeared. This uh, underscore 01 file is 0kb. I'm just going to switch to a different track now. I'll just sing, single select the vocal track. And sure enough, a vocal 0kb file has appeared. So over the course of your project, any audio file that you select uh, and record arm, Cubase is going to create these 0kb files. Now they're locked. If I try to delete that file, it will tell me I can't. If you shut the project down, all of these files are cleaned up. So all I can say is ignore any 0kb files in your audio folder. They're used by Cubase internally. You can't do anything about them. It appears that it's the way that it kind of earmarks a file for processing when somebody does some recording, but there's nothing we can do to interact with them. Just wanted to bring your attention to them. Next thing that I wanted to show you is the equivalence of the names in your pool with the named files. So here we have guitar solo. Unfortunately, every time I click on this, Explorer is gonna disappear. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm going to rename this clip guitar solo X. And when I bring Explorer back, you can see that the audio file behind the scenes has been named as well. So the file on your hard disk, if Cubase knows what the link is and it knows that this is an active and in use file, then it'll keep the names equivalent. Let's rename that back to solo. And sure enough, as you can see, the file on the disk has been renamed as well. Next thing I'm gonna do is import a new audio file into this project. Now, this is personally the way I do it. When I'm working with, um, with audio, and particularly with the pool, I make all of the audio that I use in the project a part of the project. In other words, I'm gonna copy any samples or audio files I use into this audio pool. So it's completely encapsulated. You can have references to external links, but for obvious reasons, that's gonna make management of your projects much more difficult. So simply from my perspective, I think it just makes absolute sense to copy the audio, put it in your project. Then you can edit and do whatever you want with that file. Your original copy in your sample folder is gonna be completely unharmed. Let's do that. So here's my sample data drive. I have this folder called core samples where all of my uh, audio samples live. And if I select one of these, let's have a listen to Gong Shot One. Okay, decent gong sound. Let's drag that across into the audio pool. So I'm literally gonna locate the audio folder. Here it is inside my Super Noodles project. I'm gonna pick this file up and drop it in there. Because it's on a separate drive, I can pick it up and drag it. Obviously you can copy and paste. If it's on the same drive, don't wanna move it, I want to copy it. And now in my folder there, you can see Gong Shot One. No change whatsoever to the pool yet. We need to import it into the project. I'm gonna do that now. I'll click the import button. You can see that it's defaulted to the audio folder. Here's the file, double click, simple as you like. And now in order to get that actually into the project itself, there's any number of ways. I almost always just pick it up and drag it into the bottom of the project. You can see I'm dragging below any existing track. I can simply drop it in there and there's the gong shot. I've just deleted that file to show you alternate ways to do it. You can right click on the clip in the pool and then we've got the insert into project option and they're all pretty self-explanatory. Let's insert it at the left locator. So now we've got the audio in the project. Let's drag it up near our guitar lines and I'll zoom in. And you can see there's a little bit of silence before the lead in. I'll just drag that out of the way. So now that gong shot is gonna play at the same time as the audio.
Next, we want to figure out how to find files in one location, i.e. the pool or the project, depending on whether or not you're looking in the other. So here we are looking at the project. If I single click on this audio file and head up into the audio menu, let's choose this find selected in pool option. It'll open the audio pool and select the audio file for me. You can do it the other way as well. I just deselect the project. Now, if I right click on the clip in the pool and head down to selecting project, goes the other way around. And now, as you can see, it's selected the file in the project that refers to this audio file. So it's really easy to keep the link between these two things. Let's have a look at what attributes we've got in the pool. I'll just make it full size because I don't actually view all of the attributes. What you see here is a cut down list. If we head into the view attributes drop down, you can see that I've got quite a lot of stuff deselected. Well, let's show all so that we can see absolutely everything that's available to us. A lot of this stuff I find I just don't need, I'm not interested in, and so I hide it. Obviously, totally a matter of personal choice. The used entry can be useful if you want to make sure that there is uh, some reference to every piece of audio in the pool. You see this gong short is currently marked as used one. If I delete the audio file in the project and head back into the pool, now the used entry is blank. I'll just undo that process. And we've gone back to one used entry. The only time I think you might want to use the status column is if you've done recording in the current project. Let's say for instance, I'll just, um, I'll just get this project going and just press record in order to generate some new audio. You can see this little red R appears to tell you that this clip here is, uh, is specific to the project that's currently active. In other words, since you last opened Cubase, this has happened. Again, undo, make that go away. And that file's been taken out of the audio and deleted off disk, it's gone from everywhere. So if you perform an undo operation on a record, it will remove the audio from the, from the pool. If I'd headed into the project and deleted that audio clip from the project, it would have left it behind in the pool as an unused file. But I'm not bothered about status, so I don't particularly care about that one. Musical mode is whether or not you're time stretching a WAV file or you're playing it natively. I use the project to keep care of all of that stuff. Don't care about that from the pool's perspective. Also don't care about the native tempo. You might, that's fine. Similarly with the time signature. So I'm throwing away all of the stuff that I only take a view on those things inside the context of the project. Well, these are all so subjective. Algorithm, um, I'm not going to get into talking about the various different um, time stretching algorithms today. That's a pretty big conversation in its own right, but you can see uh, which algorithms being applied to it from here. Once again, I'll do that stuff in the project. I don't care from the pool. I do like to see info so that I can keep a track of the start and end points of the regions. I don't care about type and don't care about real name. So this is the view that I have and that tells me everything useful that I need to know about an audio file. It just so happens that the typical size uh, of that window in, in my project is just perfect for my screen real estate. This image I want to make as big as I possibly can, so expand that one out as far as you can. Okay, let's do some editing on one of these pieces of audio. I'll choose this guitar solo, just zoom it so that it's reasonably in view. Let's say I've decided that I'm gonna keep uh, this chord strum section. And let's just say for the purposes of this demonstration that I want to delete every other instance, every other region um, out of this track. Well, if I select all of the events, it's not immediately intuitively obvious what I'm supposed to do in order to just select the one I want to keep. because so I basically want to kind of deselect the, the currently highlighted part in order to delete the rest of them. If I press the control key, you can see that we get um, a play symbol instead. What you actually have to click in Cubase is the shift key. And I've not been able to find anywhere in the tool modifiers section, got this thing in preferences, tool modifiers. There's no reference to this option in the select tool. It's kind of bizarre, but the shift option to deselect items isn't visible from inside this preferences window. Anyway, that's what it is. Press the shift key, select my currently highlighted event. So this is the one that I want to keep. And now I can safely press delete and delete every other 
uh, audio event from that track. Let's have a look at what we've got. So this is the audio that we've kept. And I'm just going to um, head very briefly back to the pool to show you that absolutely no change has happened from the pool's perspective whatsoever. At the moment, as far as it's concerned, all of this audio is still here. What this means is that all of the audio is actually still here. If I click to the left, you can see the preceding audio file. And if I click to the right, you can see the succeeding one. So the entire thing is one continuous stretch of audio and Cubase has rearranged it into these individual takes because this recording was recorded um, over a, a looped marker. So I had the, the, the cycled locators between five and 13 and it's basically chopped the audio up uh, as far as the pool's concerned into those regions, but all of the audio is still there. Let's narrow down exactly the section of audio that I want. So I want to cut this audio event here, just in front of, you can see where we've got this tiny little bit of lead in. I'm gonna cut the audio event here. Well, if I take grid off, but leave snap to zero crossing on, then I can guarantee as, you, as I'm moving the cursor along, you can see that it's snapping to zero crossings. So that's a pretty safe way to do it. I can cut it there. I'll just cut it a little bit further to the left and delete that audio event. Once again, pool has been left completely untouched. I can now pick this audio event up and drag it. It's exactly the same operation. When you're manipulating these events in the project window, all you're doing is manipulating the window of perspective that you have on the audio. Let's say at the end of this long chord, we had this chord played at the end. And I want to retain as much of that as possible, but throw this next chord away. So I can zoom right in, choose my scissors, and I've still got snap to zero crossing on. So I'm basically just gonna pick between one of those two points. I'll take that one, delete this. And so that's the audio I want to keep. Let's put a tiny little bit of a, an audio fade out on that. Really minute. So that's the section of audio that I'm gonna keep. Look at all of this rubbish that's been left behind as I was doing those various demonstrations. We'll clear all of that up shortly. It was inadvertent, but it's a nice opportunity for me to demonstrate how to keep your pool clean. All I'm gonna do now though, is convert this audio file into absolutely just this audio file. So I'm now gonna throw away all of those other takes I'm going to go into audio and I'm going to say bounce selection. If I select that option, so it's now asking me if I want to replace the event. This audio event is going to permanently change. Say yes. And now let's have a look at the pool. Two things have happened. The first thing, this guitar solo is now referring to a new audio file. Let's trace it. Find selected in pool. It's now selecting this individual piece of audio. It's 21.3 seconds long, which is eight bars in this song. And here you can see just that audio. The rest of the guitar solo has a blank used entry. So this new audio has assumed control as far as the project is concerned. And the old audio has been orphaned. It's not yet been permanently removed from the, from the disc. That will get done as part of our cleanup operation, but it has been deprecated. Having a look at that in Windows Explorer, here's our original solo file, still untouched, and here's our new guitar solo dash 01, which is 2.8 meg. And now we want to do that housekeeping exercise where we throw away all of the audio that we don't want anymore. Once again, I'm running through all of these examples just for that purpose. You know, I wouldn't ordinarily just abandon audio in this way. But what we can do is right click on the audio file right at the top of the pool and we can say remove unused media. And I always 100% of the time move stuff to the trash. So this is basically like a holding bay, a recycle bin, move it to the trash. And now that original audio is gone. The only reference to a guitar part that's left as far as the solo is concerned is that single audio file that I, um, that I extracted from, uh, from the larger take. Let's have a look in the trash can. Everything is still there. Now this is my kind of holding pattern. So when I reopen this project in a couple of days time, if I come back and discover that I've made some terrible, terrible mistake, the audio is still in the pool and it can be recovered. I can pick this audio up and drag it back into the pool and it'll be part of the project again. It doesn't yet exist anywhere, but at least it's available for use. 
However, typically what I would do is right click on the trash, empty trash. It's going to warn me that this, this is the final opportunity for you to change your mind because when you click erase, as I just did, now it really is gone. Now here's one ugly thing to take note of. Have a look at the difference between our pool and the files on our disk. We have this original gong shot one. This was the original audio file that I brought in to my project from the outside world. So the project has no idea that it exists. It's not in the pool, it's not used. It is still on the disk. If I wanna get rid of it now, cause I dragged it into this folder manually. If I want to get rid of it, that's similarly a manual process to get rid of it. It's had no impact on the project cause Cubase doesn't care about that file. Quite a lot of ground covered in this one today. Hope you enjoyed it. Please hit like if you did. I'll see you for the next one. Thanks very much.